You and me, baby. Later tonight, a little champagne, a little... Ah, 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 ah. Stop dry humping the expensive glass. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, even though uh, Captain Boy there uh, loves to uh, pimp the expensive glass, uh, the truth is a lot of people lust after it too. So we're going to talk about the philosophy of fast glass. One is purpose and one is artistic. So what's the difference, what's the distinction, and what are we talking about? We're talking about two varieties of thoroughbreds. One is one to two percent or a hair over two percent more than another, which means you have two exquisite stallions. One is excellent for breeding, for example. The other one is fit for the Kentucky Derby. So what are we talking about? Over here we have artistic fast glass and over here we have purpose-driven fast glass. Um, <clears throat> right back here is $1,200 85mm 85mm 1.4D so uh, new typically $650, $700 minty condition $1,200 new the uh, G version is a bit inferior construction uh, not really uh, superior optically not that I could actually tell when I had one for use um, the 1.8D this one is also available in the G version um, I think I've got six 85 millimeters uh, typically three hundred dollars used um, so we're talking use the difference between $300 and $700, so a little over twice as much. Um, the point being, also something I forgot to mention in a prior video on the 50mm f1.2 here, for example, is that at f1.2, I don't care how good your hand holding is, you uh, are going to need a monopod or a tripod because uh, due to camera shake or just involuntary minute muscle twitching you're not going to be able to uh, you'll actually frustrate yourself if you try to use this 1.2 lens without a tripod or a monopod specifically a tripod it's great for studio great for a light box work like this if you're doing a product shot or some sort of artistic shot so we're talking about used four hundred dollars new seven hundred dollars on the 1.4 half a stop slower hundred dollars used all day long equally superior construction half a stop slower so in the use the realm of use where we're talking about twice as much here three hundred dollars versus uh, six seven hundred dollars we are talking easily and always four times as much between a half a stop between the one four and the one two and uh, the purpose of these is strictly artistic these are you're not using that f extra half a stop at uh, dark events where flash photography is uh, not meant to be used you're not using that extra half a stop certainly not handheld uh, you're not using it uh, in weddings now you might if you're taking pictures of the ring for example but nothing in reception or the wedding there might be some still shots for wedding, which I've used uh, that uh, extra uh, half uh, extra half stop, like on the one four and on the fifty millimeter one two. Actually, never the fifty millimeter, rather the eighty five millimeter one point four. But these are artistic purpose driven lenses. Now, so far as separating out, like for example, the seventy three hundred four five five six ED, having the seventy to two hundred, and we're talking about purpose empirical driven criteria of owning fast glass in the uh, 70 to 200 two way it doesn't matter whether it's a Tamron or doesn't matter if it's a Nikon we're talking about the purpose of the fast glass you know you can't be in the wedding and reception you know blasting off with your quantum turbo pack you know everybody's eyeballs until they prop out that's just obviously not allowed you can't do that you can't get candid shots that way so the necessity of having that fast glass is something else altogether and additionally we're talking about 2.8 versus 1.4 and uh, 1.2 so we're talking about a totally different beast 
Now, um, this, as far as the degree of separation between these two, we're talking strictly artistic, and the degrees of separation between these two, we are talking about purpose, talking about necessity. I mean, if you're going to be a wedding photographer and you don't have a 70 to 200, whatever variety it is that you choose to have, you know, you're going to have to have it. And of course, you know, you write that off on your tax expenses at the end of the year, so cost ultimately isn't, is irrelevant, because it's just part of doing business. Uh, CODB, you write that into the cost of wedding, and the lens pays for itself, and you write it off, you, can, you pay for this lens twice. You pay it off in the wedding, and you pay it off on your taxes at the end of the year, so it's CODB cost, cost of doing business, paid off both ways, on your taxes, and uh, incrementally paid off in the wedding shots or the event photography that you do because using this lens unless it's outdoor reception you know everything's going to be indoor and you got to have that fast lens you got to have that fat fast glass a 70 to 200 or an 80 to 200 is my preference so we're talking about something with purpose here. A lot of people do not discern purpose in fast glass, but it has to be done. Now these are two examples of artistic driven fast glass. Now I understand someone has a lust for it, and they think, well that's going to look great on my camera. Well, that's certainly not under debate, but the question is logically and uh, speci uh, speci uh, excuse me, specifically, are you rationalizing it or are you trying to justify it? Now, so far as this lens, the 1.4 versus the 1.8, if you really think this is worth $700, if you've got unlimited funds, that's fine. But are you really going to be ever using it at 1.4 instead of 1.8? If you're constantly using, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time at 1.4 or higher, probably typically F2 and higher, then why are you spending $700? used on this lens or twelve hundred dollars new on this lens versus three hundred dollars and eighty five millimeter one eight you're rationalizing something just because you just want fast glass so there's a lot of photographers out there and aspiring and this is about saving money and differentiating out you know purpose versus artistic obviously ultimately we're talking photography so we are of course talking about art ultimately but again, you need to logically think it out as far as, you know, is this lens at $100 any less than the 50mm 1.2? Now, I showed you how narrow, razor thin, in the example shot was in the prior uh, test shot that I posted for you uh, between the 1.2, uh, you know, at the 1.2. But, you know, its spectrum of difference is one or two percent above the one four and used we're talking about one hundred dollars versus four hundred dollars at the low end um, this lens is not available anymore new this one is available still this is a current production lens the 50 millimeter f 1.2 at uh, seven hundred dollars but over here we have something totally different events club scenes, weddings, wedding receptions, indoor events, I don't know what you're shooting, Kiwanis Club or you know some sort of indoor event a lot of people can't be cranking out your flash and everybody's eyeballs and scorching out the back of their retinas you know the necessity and like I said once again we are talking about f2.8 here now if you think that you can't accomplish something at f4 that can only be accomplished at f1.2 then I will forward to you unless you're actually trying to do something razor thin artistic then you're smoking something that's illegal once again over here in the 85 millimeter range if you think that you can't accomplish it at f1.8 and you can only accomplish it at f1.4 you may be right but those number of people can be counted on one hand out of a hundred thousand to be sure so those that lust after this glass like oh god I wish I had this lens is it any better no it's not and if you had it there'd be one shot in a hundred thousand where you're gonna actually be shooting it then it narrowed up the field and using it at that f-stop range either in the one four or the one two necessitates you know really tight control monopod use or specifically tripod use so you need to think about like I said before yes I'm repeating myself artistic 
versus practical, pragmatic, utilitarian fast glass. Over here we have utilitarian fast glass. It is necessity, or as the Greeks would call it, ananke. It, you know, it's necessitated. It's not artistic, it is a necessity. Weddings, receptions, indoors events. So I think you get the point there, and um, trying to save people money. I know a lot of people see this stuff and they get the OFAS, they go, oh, 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 I gotta own that, oh, well, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, well, I better not use that analogy, it might be a little too crude, so I'll backpedal off the analogy I was about to give, but, uh, I think I made my point, and a lot of you people piss and moan that, uh, I drone on too much and repeat myself, but, uh, I did a search, and there's no other YouTube video out there about this, and uh, ultimately it's really important. And, uh, you know, you got to acknowledge that in your mind if you're going to start collecting glass, because the quickest way to piss away your money very, very quickly in photography, you know, you need to save that for other things. You know, you can piss it away very easily in, uh, in, uh, in uh, glass, and uh, I've already done it a hundred times over, so I'm trying to save you guys a few bucks and tell you that what's there is uh, likely not what you think is there so you still got a thoroughbred right here we're talking about a one degree of separation between these and these and it's strictly artistic whereas we have a significant degree of separation between a nice telly like this and a 2.8 like this but we are talking about practicality and necessity versus strictly artistic so I think I made things simple, even if I repeated myself too much. <gasps> Excuse me. Thanks for watching the Angry Photographer. If you like this video, you can always drop a buck or two, or you tell me to go where to screw myself, or you could always send me a nice box of uh, chocolates. <laughs> no, just kidding. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll retract that statement. I was just thinking about creamy milk chocolate right now, and I wished I had a huge milk chocolate bar with some almonds in it. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, my fat ass does not need. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later.